Hi guys and welcome to the second episode of my off-grid series and in this episode as promised I'm going to talk about the um, Joha thermal heat pump heating system that I have made for my off-grid shed. So let's get back to the beginnings and before even mentioning the system let's do a quick test of it. So it's been running for um, maybe uh, 10 minutes and let's check, check the temperatures. This is the inside one, this is the outside one. Uh, they're both in Celsius because I'm in Europe and I can't ch change this to Fahrenheit, so sorry for uh, you American viewers. You have to do the conver conversion yourself. Um, so 20.5 degrees um, Celsius inside, I guess it's like normal room temperature for American um, viewers. And 15.5 degrees uh, Celsius outside, it's not really chilly, but it's biased a bit because the sensor is in sunlight. Not direct, but reflected sunlight. Um, the shed, as I already um, told you, is not insulated. Uh, this is just wood, uh, one centimeter thick, going to the outside, the roof as well. Um, all the wood, uh, walls are non-insulated. Uh, the windows are leaky, because you can see the light from here and also from there. Especially from... Um, yeah, from here, sorry, here. The door is massively leaky. I can pass my fingers through here, um, the bottom as well. I can feel a draft through here. <laughs> it, it, I, it re I'm like boiling hot here because of the, I have the heat pump next to me. And then here there's this weird draft that is blowing inside. Also here above the heat pump itself, there is this gap here and also down there and this flaps in the breeze. So not really pretty. Uh, this window as well here has got the same problem. So it's not really insulated and yet, oh, it's heating up. It's heating up 21.1. So this is too hot. I'm going to turn it off. There it is. So let's go do a quick check on the temperatures um, of the, sorry. So of the compressor. 35 degrees, not really warm. The coils, really hard to get them, 31. This is not, it's not been running for a while, but I have been running uh, running it for really long periods, like more than half an hour or even more. And sometimes if uh, the load is on, on it is really high, like the the ground outside is really hot uh, because it's been heating by the, uh, heated by the sunlight, it can trip the overload on the compressor. So this is going to be fixed as well because I need a softer starter. Um, but now that we have made a quick analysis on, on the inside, so I'm going to talk about how I made it. So as you can see, it's really just standard um, refrigeration, uh, refrigeration circuit with capillary tube uh, metering. Um, it is just taken from an old fridge. Uh, one of those, uh, not the really big American ones, nor the mini fridges, they're just an intermediate size. And uh, the eva evaporator was uh, the same size of the freezer. It was a U shape like this U uh, that was about 30 centimeters high by uh, 40 centimeters wide. And it's buried underground. I'm going to show that later. And the uh, coils were wrapped around the, the outside of the pr fridge like this. These are the coils, I just bent them to make them compact. Um, they were a pain to remove, really a pain, because there is the insulation, there was the insulation, then the layer of coils, then sticky tape and glue, and then the outside uh, sheet metal of the fridge. So it, it was a pain to disassemble. And I managed to disassemble it without uh, piercing the tubes, which, which is a great thing because I don't know yet how to refill the refrigeration systems, uh, and also because I don't have a vacuum pump. So um, then the capillary tubing, the um, filter dryer, accumulator, and everything is just say, the same because I, uh, I didn't disassemble the uh, the circuit, the gas circuit. The compressor is a 90 watt one from uh, Dongfeng something industries and uh, I think Korean or Chinese. It's got the CCC mark so I think it's probably Chinese rather than Korean. And um, 90 watt uh, R134A uh, refrigerant. Um, what else? I added this circuit breaker here to protect the 
compressor to a square telemechanique uh, one uh, star stop and you can find it in the United States uh, as well because it's square D square D is a um, is, um, USA manufacturer of electrical products and uh, I chose this one because a I got it for free and B it, it has under this I'm sorry you can say it very well here Oops, open it. Well, here it has the um, the trip current is um, modifiable by me, so I had it modified at uh, 0.5 amps, so it trips when this thing overheats too much, uh, because it's or when it's it, when it gets stuck before it trips the internal overload. I don't trust the internal overload very much, so I use this to um, trip in case the the piston gets seized or anything like that. And it's at, at the moment it's powered by the grid via the long long ex extension cord running to my other house, and um, um, I think I will be able to power it via an inverter. But uh, I tested it with my six hundred watt Chinese inverter that is in reality a hundred fifty one watts uh, rebranded as a six uh, six hundred watts. And when it when it starts it trip it yeah sorry it trips the the inverter and uh, the inverter goes to fault mode so um, perhaps it's because this uh, needs a too high starting current um, and the inverter can't supply it uh, perhaps I'll just try bypassing the shunt resistor of the inverter that measures how much current is mm, is flowing through the inverter and trips if it gets too high um, so I'll keep you updated on running this thing on inverter. Perhaps I'll just get a, a better inverter in the meantime. But let's go outside and sh see the other part of the system. Sorry, I have to do open the door. Here we go. I need to get a better latch as well because it's really a pain to open it that way. And it's a pain to close as well. So here is the uh, extension cord go running out. And um, here's the refrigerant pipe going under. You can see right there, the uh, capillary tubing is going inside the refrigerant line, the um, refrigerant return line. And I don't know why they chose to do, to do that in the factory, but they, I guess they had the, their reasons. And uh, I just uh, buried the evaporator underground here. It's about this size, uh, this big. And you can see here a part of it is here. I can't bury it further underground because A, the refrigerant pipe is not long enough and B, there are stones under a certain depth here so I can't dig because you, you see the wall is here and uh, there is the, um, I think it's bedrock already uh, but it's really a pain to, to dig here. I buried this pipe a long ago and, it's, and it can't go deeper than 60 centimeters so I think the, what, I found that, uh, what I found at 30 centimeters are just random rocks and then there is a bag, the um, uh, bedrock at 60 centimeters. Um, I watered the ground a while ago uh, to help it compress on the evaporator and, uh, and get a uh, suitable heat exchange and it's working fine uh, as, you see, as you saw before. And I didn't bother getting a, th a thermosat because I thought, yeah, it's not going to heat up the place really well since it has so much leaks. But I think I'm going to get a thermos, uh, thermosat because <laughs> I was sweating before when I when I turned it on to to make to record this video. Now that I have opened the window, it's already cooled down to 17.7. But before I was sweating hot. So <laughs> um, thermosat is on its way, and in I think I've said everything that I should say for my heat pump. So I'm quite pleased with it and it works fine. And it's hit it's it's hitting out the place really nicely and it doesn't um it doesn't need much power. Although I can't run it on the inverter, it's it's only um, ninety watts, so it's not really a big deal compared to hitting this thing with a seven hundred watts um uh, that's, uh, the smallest size uh, electric heater that is not heat pump that I could find is 700 watts so this is really a lot, a lot of power so uh, apart from passive heating like solar or um, uh, replacing this with a glass pane um, it's really a nice solution so see you later